Hello and welcome to the Virtual Mank YouTube channel. My name is Neil McLaughlin, aka the Virtual Mank. On this channel, you're going to find the latest news about Azure Virtual Desktop, Windows 365, Intune, Nerdio, Entry ID, and much, much more. So please stay tuned for more content. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about something which can really supercharge your Azure Virtual Desktop or Windows 365 experience. It's something called RDP Shortpath. So what exactly is RDP Shortpath? In simple terms, RDP Shortpath is a feature that enables direct UDP-based connectivity between the client and the Azure Virtual Desktop or Windows 365 session host, bypassing the need for connection to traverse the Azure Virtual Desktop gateway. This reduces latency and improves the uh, connection stability. So without RDP Shortpath, your connection typically can reach through the Azure infrastructure, which can really sometimes lead to delays, especially if you're far from an Azure region. RDP Shortpath, on the other hand, establishing a more direct path, improving the performance by lowering latency, providing high reliability, and delivering a much smoother user experience. So, now let's get a bit more technical. So, RDP Shortpath works by leveraging UDP for direct connectivity, unlike traditional methods which rely on TCP and the routes for the Azure infrastructure. RDP Shortpath establishes a UDP-based connectivity directly from the client to the session host. Okay, so for this to work, both the client and the session host must support UDP connectivity. So when conditions are optimal, the connection automatically switches to this direct mode. It's like taking a shortcut through traffic. You get to your destination much, much faster and with much less hassle. So now let's take a quick look and see what the actual differences are between UDP and TCP, and then you'll understand why it gives you a much better user experience. So let's look at the differences between TCP and UDP and then you'll understand why UDP is the preferred protocol to use when connecting to your AVD or Windows 365 desktops. Okay, so back to basics. So what are TCP and UDP? So TCP, Transmission Control Protocol, is like a connection oriented protocol. It's like making a phone call when you establish a connection before sharing information and showing that every part of your conversation is heard correctly. UDP is a connection list protocol. So imagine sending a bunch of postcards, you just drop them in the mail and without knowing it, they'll arrive, but it's much, much faster, okay? Let's talk about reliability. So TCP is all about reliability, right? It ensures that all the data packets are sent and received and acknowledged. So if a packet is lost, TCP is gonna resend it. This makes TCP perfect for applications where data integrity is essential, stuff like web browsing, emails, file transfers. So if your network is unreliable, then TCP may not be a preferred option for connection to the session host, okay? UDP doesn't care about reliability. It just sends packets without checking if they arrive or not. So if a pack is lost, it's just gone. The connection will drop. So this makes UDP ideal for real-time applications like video streaming, online gaming, voice calls, where speed is more important than accuracy. So if you're gonna use UDP to connect to your desktops, you need to ensure that your network is rock solid. Um, otherwise, you're gonna have a lot of unhappy users as the connections are gonna get dropped um, on, on a regular basis. So um, lastly, let's look at speed. So TCP is slower due to its reliability checks, okay? So it has to establish a connection, send data, wait for acknowledgements, and resend any lost packets. So this extra work ensures accuracy but adds delay. UDP is faster because it skips all those checks, right? So it just sends the data without worrying what happens next. This makes UDP more efficient for time-sensitive applications where delays can disrupt the user experience. So to sum it up, TCP is like a careful and reliable friend who always checks to make sure you got the message, whereas UDP is a speedy friend who shoots off messages without looking back. So each has both got their own strengths and weaknesses and depending on the situation, but one might be better than the other. Um, in general, if you want speed and you've got a really fast um, network, then UDP or RDP short buff is going to be the one to go for. If you've got a unreliable network or if you go through lots of different sort of VPNs and firewalls and stuff, um, and then TCP uh, may be the one to go for. So UDP is not always a correct choice. That's what people sometimes don't think about. They always move towards, yeah, I want to get UDP working. I want to get UDP working. But in some situations, it may not be possible just due to all the firewall restrictions, all these sort of jumps between networks and gateways and stuff. So sometimes TCP is actually the better choice, okay, for a much more improved, reliable um, experience. Because I'm sure if you ask a user, would they rather have like a reliable but okay connection or would rather have an unreliable but super fast connection, right? They're going to go for the reliable connection, right? So that's some things that you want to think about um, when you're choosing whether you want to use RDP short path or not. OK, 
Okay, so how, how do we know if we're using RDP show path or whether we're using TCP? Um, so you actually can tell the information when you actually connect um, to your desktop session. So let's take a quick look um, at my screen. So I'm logged on to my uh, Azure Virtual Desktop Session host here. And you can see, if you, let me just close that down and go back, back into it. So if I go to this connection information uh, bar at the top, so I'll click that. Um, and now it basically tells me your quality setting is good. Um, and UDP is enabled, right? So if that was um, using TCP, it would say TCP, okay? So if we go to see details, and we can see a bit more detail here. So things to look at, network details. So transport protocol, UDP, okay? And here it shows the round trip time. Now the round trip time is probably the biggest difference that you'll see um, when you're using UDP instead of TCP. So um, normally with a TCP, we'll, we'll test it shortly, uh, but normally with TCP, we get a round trip time of maybe 15 milliseconds or more um, because of routing through um, the, the Azure Virtual Desktop front door gateways and stuff. Um, and also available bandwidth. So when we're using um, TCP, we'll probably have maximum bandwidth of like 40 megabits a second. Um, whereas because I've got a direct connection to my session host, um, I'm using all the local bandwidth that I've got available um, on my local network. Um, so that's showing me I've got greater than 216 megabits a second, which is quite good. And the other thing to note as well, so you can see here where it says gateway name, not in use. Um, what that shows is I'm not going through the Azure Virtual Desktop gateway, right? This is a direct connection from me onto the um, session host, okay? And that's where it also says, gateway logon method not used uh, because we just um, logged on directly um, to the, the session host as well, okay? So quite useful for tracking just to see whether um, what was happening. Um, and we'll also show you shortly how to look at information um, within the log analytics workspaces as well. Um, so you can see um, and track which users are using it, which users aren't using it. Um, and then you can use that to identify like, okay, have we got any firewall issues which is stopping this um, from working, um, which can be uh, quite useful. Okay, so that's how you check on the actual session host. So next, what we'll do is we'll jump over to the um, log analytics, and then we'll have a look at the uh, the data in there to see what that's telling us about this connection as well. Okay. So let's actually see now how we can configure the the RDP short path configuration settings. So. Microsoft recently changed this. Um, so it used to be a registry setting that you have to configure. Um, and then there was some stuff you could configure within the portal. Um, uh, but a lot of people configured it, configured it via group policy as well. Um, but recently um, there's a change within the portal where we can be a lot more control um, over how we can do this. So let's just have a quick look and see, um, see what that looks like. So as you can see here, um, I'm in the properties of the host pool. Okay, um, we're under the networking tab. So here we can configure um, where we want to use RDP show path and manage networks. I'm not going to go into much detail about the differences between all these today. Um, there's lots of documentation you can read on that. Um, but essentially, there's, there's two types of um, RDP show path. There's managed networks, if you're using like uh, a VPNs or in on your internal network, or as there's public networks. So if you use it, it's kind of sat at home. Okay, um, and then we have these things called stun and turn relays, um, and they're essentially um, used if you have like a, a NAT firewall or if you behind a firewall. Okay, um, again, I won't go into a lot of detail um, because we could. There's a whole subject to talk about on its own um, about these two, but the problem was essentially sometimes customers um, felt that they didn't have enough control um, to configure which settings they want and which settings they don't want because, as I mentioned before, sometimes it's actually preferable to use TCP rather than UDP um, to disable RDP short path. Okay, um, so we now have the ability to basically do that. All right, so. If I wanted to do that, for example, how would we do that? So what I can basically do here is I can go to RDP short path for managed networks. I can click on disabled. Okay. I can go RDP short path for managed networks done. Click disabled, disabled, 
disables okay so this is going to completely disable rdp sure path for me and the same is in reverse as well so if you basically if you wanted to only use rdp sure path for public networks for example i can just click that to enable and if you didn't want to use rdp sure path for managed networks i'll just leave that disabled for example so it just gives you a lot more flexibility um, around how you want to do this so i'm just going to change that to disable okay and then i'm going to click on the save button and that's essentially now all we have to do right so previously we have to mess about with road settings group policies um now we can just control those a lot more granularly um within within the portal okay so that's how you basically enable rdp show buff rdp show buff is actually enabled by default um so it's now if you make a connection to a host pool um and the required firewall stuff's already there and you, there's no connection issues, then it will just use it by default. Okay, so that's enabled by default, right? So um, you only want to enable or disable, if you only want to configure these settings, um, if you want to control um, how RDP your path is, is working inside your environment. Okay, so that's how you configure RDP your path. All right, so what, what does it look like if we don't use RDP short path, right? So previously, we just tested with RDP short path. So let's see what the connection settings are like now we disabled RDP short path. Okay, so same session host, same host pool. The only difference is I've disabled RDP short path, right? So first thing you'll notice, transport protocol, it now says WebSocket, okay? Um, so we're using TCP, yeah? Run trick time, that's saying 12 milliseconds, which is actually pretty good to be honest with you. Um, sometimes I've done this test and it's done like 20 milliseconds, so um, 12 milliseconds is still quite a reasonable um, connection time. But the biggest difference is you'll see the available bandwidth has now gone from like more than like 260 megabits a second to 6 megabits a second, right? Which is huge, yeah. Um, so imagine if you're working with like, uh, I don't know, lots of software which is transferring lots of data. So CADACAM software with GPUs and using video and that kind of stuff and Teams calls. That's going to make a big difference, right? Because I've gone from 100 or 260 megabits a second down to 6 megabits a second. Okay. And that's because all the traffic is going through the Azure Virtual Desktop um, gateway. Okay. The other difference is you'll see the connection name. Right, so it's saying RD Gateway Hosts, C2, blah, 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 blah. So that's the Azure Front Door Gateway, right? That's how we're, we're getting into the, the Azure Virtual Desktop um, Gateway um, infrastructure. So that's why the connection will be a lot less, a lot slower, right? Uh, because I've um, got much less available bandwidth uh, because I can only use the bandwidth that's available when my traffic is traversing those uh, kind of network connections. So, yeah, huge difference, right? So we've gone from 260 megabits a second to 6 megabits a second, right? So just imagine what that would do for your user experience. Um, but as I mentioned, this is now more um, reliable, okay? Um, so, for example, if my network connection drops, um, it may be un unavailable for a second or two, but then because of the retries, it will connect it again. Um, whereas if, if I was using UDP and my connection dropped, my network dropped, then my connection would drop and it wouldn't reconnect. Okay. Um, so that's the, the biggest differences. So do you want speed or do you want reliability? That's the conversations that we need to have when we're using, um, RDP short path. Okay. So that's pretty, pretty much it for me. Um, I hope you've found this video useful. Um, I hope you've learned something. I hope you found some good tips and tricks um, and how to think about RDP short path a bit more because um, a lot of customers don't really think about it enough. Um, they just anger enable it, um, thinking that everything's going to be good, but sometimes it ends up causing more problems than it's worth. Um, I've spoke with a few customers where the recommendation is to actually disable it. Right, because the network issues that we, we spoke about or firewall restrictions or something. So it's not like the the most amazing solution um, if you've got a complicated network infrastructure. Um, if you've got a nice simple infrastructure and you've got all the required firewall ports open for it, great, go for it. Um, but 
if you've got network routes where you're traversing across um, stuff which you have no control of, which can regularly drop out, um, then TCP may be the, the more preferred connection um, to go for. Okay. All right. That's it for me. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.